Welcome to America's favorite fragrance game show, Clones or No Clones, with your host, Ashton Jensen. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Ash here. Uh, welcome back to Jensen's today. The game show, Clones or No Clones. What are we talking about today? Which will it be? <laughs> clones. Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Jensen's. Hope that you're doing well. Shattered my elbow just now, that's pretty sweet. Today I have for you guys 10 different clone fragrances that blew my mind the first time that I smelled them. Most of these are newer fragrance clones, although I did put a couple in that I've had for a long time. So each one of these, the quality for the price point is awesome. I'll have all of them linked in the description below. Feel free to check them out down there and use these codes should you shop for any of these fragrances across any of those websites. GS11 will save you 11% off at fractalex.com. Triple Traders has a lot of clone fragrances. So does the perfume box. So make sure to check those if maybe it's sold out at the places you'd usually shop. And by it, I mean whatever you're looking for. One more thing really quickly, guys. I have a newsletter that I have started. You can sign up in the description below. No cost to you, absolutely free. I'm not gonna spam your email or anything like that, but I am going to send you uh, fragrance deals and I'm gonna try to get exclusive sales only for you guys that sign up. So the only people that will see those deals are you specific codes and things like that. And I will also do some written reviews from time to time that I'll include in those newsletters. So stuff that I don't talk about on the channel, things like that, uh, I'll put into the newsletter. Since I have this beautiful, just stunning uh, presentation here, just really great. Let's talk about that one first. This is from Latafa and it's All Nishama Caprice, which this one I ordered from Fragrance Buy. And when I got it in, I was like, oh, that's different. It looks like a piece of Toblerone that you broke off, doesn't it? But yeah, it's, uh, it's different. It is unique looking and just opens up like that. And your bottle sits down inside here. Uh, my bottle had actually come loose during transit. So it was just flopping around down in there, but it's supposed to be sitting inside this little cutout right there. Nice magnetic closure. So that's good. The bottle also equally different looking, but I think it's pretty nice actually. It's like a different take on an Isi Miyake bottle or something to an extent. So big, huge cap right there and you take it off and you go, oh, you're much smaller than I thought. It's like somebody wearing uh, really stacked heels, you know, they look like they're six foot three, take their shoes off and suddenly it's like, it's going guys, that's this. None of that matters ultimately. Ultimately what matters is what's ultimately inside this bottle. And that is a clone of La Nuit de Lome Blue Electrique. Blue Electrique clones make a lot of sense, at least for people in the US, because it's difficult to find that fragrance here in the US unless you wanna pay a lot of money. And there's still a good amount of demand for it. You know, really wearable, compliment pulling blue take on Lana Weed alone, pretty sweet. So it makes sense to have clone fragrances of that, you know, affordable versions of that scent. And uh, the first one that really took off was Jack of Clubs by Fragrance World. And that's a good fragrance. And it even comes with a pack of cards, which is cool, I guess. I mean, if you find yourself hanging out with your friends and you're like, ah, oh, man, it'd be great to play blackjack or poker. Ah, but I don't have a pack of cards. Wait, I bought that Fragrance World clone that came with the pack of cards. My night is safe. That has to have happened at least once, probably. But anyway, that was the first one that came out and it was well done, it was good, but it wasn't quite the exact same as Blue Electric. So you had Jack and Clubs, that was the first big one. Then here recently we've had Iconic Nuit Cerulean, which is also a Blue Electric alternative. And now this bad boy right here. And I think to this point, if you want the best one, best bang for your buck, that's gonna get you the closest to La Nuit, you probably go with this Latafa here. And it's slightly annoying for me because I got Iconic Nuit in like maybe three weeks before I, I bought this. And at the time I got that, I was like, man, this is probably the best blue electric clone on the market right now. And then I get this one and I'm like, this is probably the best blue electric alternative on the market right now. I feel like I'm in Groundhog Day. I feel like now that I've made this video, that here in like two weeks, there's gonna be some new, I don't know, Alhara main or something that comes out that's a blue electric alternative. And I'm just gonna go. 
But yeah, blue electric, fantastic alternative right there. Up next, we have this little beaut from Pandora. Milano Privé. And Pandora is Paris Corner uh, because, you know, all the different clone houses, they have different sub brands and stuff like that. That's what's going on here. And Milano Privé is a clone of One Million Privé. Uh, you can get that vibe once you kind of piece it all together. You're like, oh yeah, the color scheme, the name, everything. Okay, I get it. Maybe the bottle doesn't immediately remind you of One Million because, you know, One Million just looks like a, a bar of gold. Well, I guess the One Million Privé one is brown, but you know what I'm saying. But the, the shape, a bit similar. And One Million Privé is another fragrance that has been discontinued and yet still has good demand for it, which is, as I've said a bunch of times, really my favorite type of clone fragrance. For me, you take a discontinued scent, especially if it's one that I loved, you bring it back and it smells extremely similar, but for a much, much lower price point, then you automatically have a fan in me. And that's what they did, so. I like it a lot. One Million Privé was uh, one of my favorite, if not my just outright favorite fragrances from uh, Paco Rabanne and the One Million line. It's a really well done tobacco fragrance. Has sweetness in there, of course. It is One Million after all, but done in a way that's super appealing, very easy to wear, and doesn't go overly youthful. I mean, younger guys can easily wear the stuff. I'm not saying they can't, but it's not like bashing you over the head with um, bubble gum. So that's what this is, one million per bay, extremely well done and affordable. You gotta be a little bit careful with Pandora slash Paris Corner because uh, depending on the fragrance, they have a, a big wide range of how those scents come across. Some of them just feel like they missed the mark. After that, let's move on to this one, French Avenue Liquid Brune. This is actually Fragrance World, where we just talked about Pandora, Paris Corner, whole thing going on with sub brands and stuff. That's what this is. It's French Avenue, but it's actually Fragrance World. So this is a clone of Parfums de Marly Altair, and it is stupid good. This is a really, really nice alternative. The second you spray this on, you know exactly what it is. This isn't one of those deals where you have to go, oh, let me check it out, you know, spray, spray, spray. I don't know, I can't tell. It's a little, it's a little nah, that's not it. You spray it on and you go, oh, it's the PDM. Couple of things with this one. First off, the cap. Uh, it does not really click into place very well, so I wouldn't pick this up by the cap unless you wanna chuck your bottle. Atomizer is so-so. As you can see right there, it gets the job done, but ultimately that doesn't matter too much because what's on the inside is absolutely fantastic. That said, in the US, this has been difficult to find. I mean, it's been kicking around, you know, information about it here and there, but not very easy to pick up a bottle. Until now. It started popping up at stores, and actually I did see one store, I'm not gonna name them or anything, but I did see one store who was asking $80 if you wanted to buy this as part of the pre-order. That way you could be one of the first ones to get it in. I'm not telling you what to do, okay? If you really wanna do that, that makes you happy, you go for it, but uh, I, I wouldn't do that. It doesn't really sit right where, you know, people have been clamoring for it, looking for it, and now it's finally popping up and they go, ah, you know what we could do? Charge double for this and make it a pre-order. You know, let's just really try to squeeze as much as we can from people like this. Come on, especially nowadays, right? Inflation being what it is, and you're gonna be like, oh, $80 free order for that clone. So I wouldn't do that. I would not do that. I would not do that. Don't do that. Unless you really wanna do that, but don't do that. Wait just a tad bit more. You know, once it starts popping up at places like that, you know it's a very short turnaround until it's available most everywhere, at least initially. You know how it's gonna go comes in stock, sells out, goes in stock, sells out, that kind of deal for a, a little bit, but it's gonna be everywhere. That price is not gonna be 80 bucks. You know, don't get screwed. But when this stuff is readily available and not selling out very quickly, absolutely scoop this up if you want a clone of Altair. This stuff is bang on. A weird one next. Look at this, Blue by Ahmed. And this is uh, all Maghribi. And I gotta say, when you look at it, Honestly, it doesn't, at least to me, look like too much, right? Kind of a stock bottle look with the little sticker on the front here, plastic cap. And it does have a gradient, 
but it goes kind of like yellowish looking at the top. That's just the color of the fragrance. It's actually clear, but it's got like a yellowish tinge and then blue at the bottom, which is maybe not the most appealing thing to look at for some people maybe. I don't know. You can let me know what you think. Maybe a lot of you out there think it looks fantastic. I'm not sure. But I've actually had this for uh, a month or so, maybe a month and a half even. Uh, I got this when it was first listed on Fragrance Buy. Uh, so they had this as part of like a big drop and I scooped this up and um, yeah, I got to say the first time, first time that I got this out, sprayed this on, pretty nice atomizer, as you see right there, nice little pressurized atomizer. But anyway, first time I sprayed this on, I was not loving it. Just the uh, citrus, the way that the citrus hit the first time I smelled it, I was like, Ooh, it's a bit sharp. And uh, truth be told, I sprayed it that first time, sat it to the side didn't go back to it for probably three weeks, three, four weeks. Went back to it here recently, just this past week actually. And I gotta say, it does smell much, much nicer. So this is one that blew my mind in a negative way at first, and then it came around to be more positive. So this smells like, uh, well, I guess not a surprise with the name. It smells like a Blue de Chanel type fragrance. Blue, <laughs> you really went out of your way to Come up with a fancy name for this one, which I guess, you know, Milano Preve over here, sometimes you just, just call it what it is, right? So yeah, Blue de Chanel type fragrance, very citrus forward. It's more of like a Blue de Chanel Eau de Toilette type of scent for me. Much, much, much better than something like Tag Helm by Armoff. That's, that's really bad. Uh, this is just infinitely better than that. But I would say when you first get this out, first spray it on, that citrus might hit you in a way where you feel like, oof, it's a bit sharp. It's a bit too much. Uh, let it sit for a little bit, go back to it, and it does uh, open up quite nicely. Let's keep moving with this. Haramein Detour Noir Exclusif. So this is one that I did a review on. Uh, this is a clone of Leighton Exclusif. Not a surprise, look at the color scheme, the name, everything, and of course it's Detour Noir. The original Detour Noir was a, a Leighton clone is a latent clone, don't know why I said was, like it's no longer in existence, you can still find it. So this is a little bit more expensive than uh, the original Detour Noir, but I think it's worth it. I think that this is the overall better fragrance. Quality is nicer. Um, the presentation for what it's worth, I mean, the same shape and everything, but it looks a little bit higher end than the original Detour Noir. You get a nice uh, pressurized atomizer with this one. Really good performance, has that same compliment factor like you would expect from a Leighton type fragrance. And for me, it kind of sits somewhere between the original Leighton and Leighton Exclusive. So it's not quite as animalic as Leighton Exclusive is. If you spray them on side by side, you'll notice that, that this one doesn't have as much of an edge to it, but it still conveys that, that richness, that spice, that deepness really well, and is a huge compliment puller, just like the original Leighton or Leighton Exclusive. Really, really well done. And uh, even though it is, like I said, you know, five, six dollars more than the original Detour Noir, it feels better all the way across the board. Better performance, better presentation, better atomizer, better quality, just the whole deal. Pandora again up next. Noir Dora B. And this is uh, kind of a Mancera looking clone when you look at the, uh, the bottle here. So that may be what you are expecting. And it kind of is, but not really. It's a Montal clone, but of course Montal and Mancera, is the same company. So this is a, a clone of Arabian's Tonka, which you probably tell just by taking a look at the color scheme and the little horsey on the front of the bottle. And that is one of the more desirable Montal fragrances over the past number of years. So it makes sense that they would do an alternative to that one. Uh, Atomizer here is, uh, Check it out. It's really interesting to me actually to run through this side by side because you'll see some clone fragrances will put really nice pressurized atomizers on their fragrance and it just makes the whole thing feel a little bit nicer and it could almost even trick you to think, oh, that's probably higher quality because you know they're putting more attention to detail with the atomizer. And then you'll have other ones where you spray it and it's just, it feels bad. Like it doesn't spray out much. It's not consistent with how much it sprays. It feels cheap talking about the atomizer. And so your initial reaction might be, oof, that's pretty bad. I don't know. Uh, what's on the inside here may not be so good. All I'm saying is if anybody from any of these clone houses watches, you know, something like this, that helps. 
It's not the end all be all. Ultimately, it's the fragrance that is the most important thing, of course. But if you show that you're paying attention to things like that, then I think people in general are gonna be anticipating a better product and it just makes the whole thing feel elevated as compared to That may look okay on cam, but I'm telling you in person, it's very bleak. That said, doesn't matter. That is actually a really well done, very affordable take on the Montal. Good push, very elegant, very wearable, nice sweetness to it. And even though it looks like a Mancera, this is a great Arabian Stanka Montal alternative. Uh, let's move from there to this. That's Lovinsure Seal from Al Haramain. Nice uh, blue color to this one. Ooh, let's do a little atomizer check here. Me gusta. This one kind of cracks me up to an extent because uh, this is one of their newest fragrances and it is a clone of Millicent Imperial from Creed. So what would make me crack up about that? Well, uh, Armoff, I feel like, at least in my own mind, that there's the Club de Nuit Intense line from Armoff and it kind of goes to battle against Lovinsure, right? Like all Harmon's Lovinsure line, at least in my own head. And our moth has had Club de Nuit uh, Milestone for a minute. And now they're like, oh, aha, we, we got one out too. Years late, but we're, we're at the party now. Now I'm not actually trying to bust on all Harmon. This is a great alternative to Millicene Imperial. And for a lot of people, this could be more wearable than Club de Nuit Milestone. This does not quite lean as heavily into the uh, ambergris side of things. It's not quite as deep as Millicene Imperial is. It's a little more fresh, fruity, zingy. You can still absolutely tell what this is. It's, it's not something where you're gonna mistake this for something else. It's Millicene Imperial, but with a twist. And I noticed that this is marketed, at least on a, a few different websites, as being for women. To me though, this is like Millicene Imperial, really unisex and easily guys can wear that with absolutely no problem. From there we go to Perlador from Barouge. This is a, a clone of Carlisle from Parfum Smarly. And this is one that I've had for a while actually. Um, I got this one, oh man, time flies. I don't know, maybe three years ago? March of 2022, so two years. This is another one that has a nice atomizer. So. Thumbs up there. And the quality on this is very, 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 very good. Which makes sense because this is a, a little bit pricier than some clone fragrances. It's not expensive, but you know, it costs more than some of these ones that are in that $30 range. And you get 85 milliliters here instead of 100. But that price difference is reflected in the quality. So presentation looks pretty good. Atomizer is nice and uh, it gives you Carlisle vibes with uh, maybe a little more fruit. A little more sweetness off the top, but not in like a sugary way, not a bubblegummy way. It's still really well done and great performance as well. So uh, this is an awesome alternative to Carlisle. If you've never smelled Carlisle, um, you know, it's sort of in that uh, red tobacco family of fragrances only more elegant, not as aggressive. Let's go Swiss Arabian Shagoff Oud Azrak next. And this is uh, reminiscent of something like um, Honey Aoud from Montal. And this was part of a haul of fragrances that I bought from Joma Shop, if memory serves correctly. I bought this one and like a couple of Rassasis and some other stuff. And this was really the, uh, the standout from that haul. Like this was one where the first time I smelled it, I was just like, Ooh. Where has that been? At the time, it was pretty cheap, uh, if memory serves correctly. Uh, I think it was like in the mid thirties or something like that. Hopefully I'm not misremembering that, but I'm pretty sure. Now you have to like food fragrances here. Now I know it's in the name, so you would think, yeah, 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 I get it. But there are actually some fragrances in this line that are not really oody, so it's one of those deals where depending on the fragrance, maybe it is, maybe it's not. This one is, but like I said, more like Honey Oud from Montal, so you have this nice sweetness that helps balance out that oud, makes it more wearable. Good push, 
strong, big projection, great longevity, absolutely a fall wintertime fragrance. Don't try to spray this on in the middle of summer unless you're trying to do some chemical warfare, which don't do that. I know you want people to smell you, but there's a right way and a wrong way. Still though, a uh, really nice quality. Absolutely love this, think it slaps. And we're gonna end with this Black Beauty. This is the new Spectre from uh, Fragrance World, Spectre Wraith. And this is a clone of Black Phantom. Atomizer on that one is pretty good, but it is different from the Spectre Ghost Atomizer that I have, which I find interesting. Let's just pull out all the Spectres here real quick. This is the original Spectre. Let's check the Atomizer. It's the, pretty much the same as that one, but then Spectre Ghost. Hmm. Back to Spectre Wraith. Yeah, actually I think Spectre Wraith in the middle, original Spectre uh, last, and Spectre Ghost top, as far as atomizers. So this is a clone of Black Phantom from By Killian. Actually one of my favorite By Killian fragrances. I think that one smells absolutely amazing. Uh, it's not gonna be as versatile as something like Angel Share. First couple times that I smelled this one, I was like, it is really, really, really close to Black Phantom, except uh, the, opening. the opening of Black Phantom it hits a little bit harder. So I got a little more funk to it around the edges. But as I've worn this one more, and I have worn this a few times, I actually really like this. Uh, it's gotten closer, I feel like, in the opening to Black Phantom, or I'm just duping myself. But regardless of all that, past the opening, it's just really spot on, uh, as close as you're gonna get right now for the price point that this is at. So if you like Black Phantom, but you don't like Black Phantom's price point, then check this one out. Really, really, really well done. So there we go. Those are some clones. And those are some clones that uh, made my head go poop. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.